I will try to give you an enriching and pleasant exposure, exp exposure of application of science in a day-to-day -day life. And also, I will speak about some eminent scientists, Nobel laureates, who have whose discovery actually has changed the life in the Earth's surface. Earth surface as well. So, dear colleagues, as we know, the science is the foundation on which the progress and prosperity of the nation built. The impressive progress which the Western countries have made has been possible due to the scientific knowledge. In fact, it is because of the scientific inventions that human beings have survived in the world populated by adversaries which are physically stronger and more powerful than him. It is because of the power placed at the disposal of man that he could conquer disease and hunger and overcome his physical infirmity to tame the awesome forces of nature. In fact, dear colleagues, what we are due to the science and technology, due to the progress of science and technology, you might be aware that the Greek work of culture and philosophy would not have been possible without scientific effort. I'm sure that you must be knowing that in our earlier times, books were not written. For example, there were people who learned the Vedas, Ved, like we have a four Veds, Rig Ved, Sam Ved, Yajur Ved, and Athar Ved. So all these Vedas, they have learned by heart and passed them on to the next generation and so on and so forth. Then someone discovered primitive pen and ink, paper, Gutenberg discovered the printing, and that is how the great idea of the world has been available to us so far where we are. So, dear colleagues, we have to improve, enhance the modern and scientific temperament so that the nation or a complete humanity, whatever is facing the challenges posed by the modern technology, could be overcome. So, here I will start. Uh, my presentation. Everything is okay. Yeah, good. So, as as you know, we are working at a GD Goenka University. GD Goenka University is committed to transform the face of education in the 21st century. Dear colleagues, you might be knowing that now we are the complete humanity is suffering from so-called the coronavirus, and everyone is uh, looking towards the scientist, that how to get the vaccine or a medication that could help resolve this problem. So if you go a little back, so we observe that the biggest challenge faced by our country today is to provide education, education, especially the science education for all its citizens. The actually, the directive principle in Article 45 of the Constitution of India enjoins that the state shall endeavor to provide within the period of 10 years from the commencement of this constitution. It was decided in 1952 when the constitution was implemented. I mean, in, it was implemented in 1950. So there, this was done. So. Usually it was believed that for free and compulsory education for all children until they complete the age of, say, eight, uh, 14 years. But in principle, whatever we are observing is the magnitude of the problem is so vast that we have not been able to do this in the last even 70 years after the independence. So, so since the constitution came into the existence, Although sustainable progress has been made since then, and a literacy rate is was then in a 1951, it was a 18 percent. Now it is a improved up to 60 percent. So, uh, and it has risen substantially to up to 70 percent of population. And what is more heartening is that the female literacy has also increased from 8.86 up to 74% in 2019. So, dear colleagues, here 
the first of all i would give you the just a brief overview about the scientific progress from the human city civilization or even before from the big bang which was occurred about uh, millions of uh, years uh, ago i think uh, usually we believe that the first thrust thrust world was the big bang and the origin of the universe was 13.8 billion years ago so from there up to now we have made a lot of advancement a lot of changes so here i will give you a, just a brief overview about how science helped to change the life of the people life of the civilians life on the surface of a human being not only human being but also the nature and i will go through some scientific uh, contribution major scientific contribution that was uh, somehow done by the most eminent scientist nobel laureates and that changed the our living or our thinking so as you can see the science is the studies the changes of natural knowledge claims over time and also the cause of these changes so today's science is tomorrow's history of science therefore we believe that science is really a dynamic world so these are some definitions of education like why we educate ourselves why we need to educate our society and so on so i'm not going to read all this say uh, text but it is just for an overview and i hope the basic ideas of education we all know because we have we human have analytical mindset in the beginning human were also living in the forest with the along with the say wild animals but since a human has analytical mind so they came out from the forest and uh, somehow defined their way of living by the help of their analytical mind and education is one of the most important parameter that shifts our thinking that improves our thinking and so on. so these are the purpose of education and development as per the definition so i think uh, ppt is visible to everyone am i right dr naresh sharma yes sir good visible to everyone if so, someone is not able to see the ppt uh, kindly pin up it on your screen please you just go to the this uh, uh, where you see the people uh, on at the right corner and see the ppt and just pin up that just click on that you can are able Able to see if you are unable to see the PPT, please. Okay, good. Yes, sir. So the purpose of university in a real sense, it should not be just to train scientists, a student, but to introduce a students to a scientific way of thinking that will make them better citizen. You know, science education benefits not only the individual but also the society as a whole. in a democratic country like india the collective views of citizen influences the national directions the inability of common people to understand and interpret graphs statistics statistics scientific data could also be the helpful some facts this is some facts about the science education like a science education at all level of schooling is often seen as abstract and irrelevant to a real life students in chemistry or biology are burdened with the memorization of facts the students in physics and mathematics feel that their discipline content are abstract and can't relate these materials to the real world and so on so the student in general fail to see that science is in a nature all around them and the scientific method is widely applicable in a different aspect of their life you know the universe or a planet where we live it is a full of knowledge full of wisdom what we need we need to grasp with the efficiency of our mind and science is one of uh, science education is one of the best aspect to develop our mind so develop our thinking so the in school curricula science subjects are segregated into physics chemistry biology and connections between these fields are usually not emphasized memorization root learning and keyword marking in exams are all well known ills so young people regard schooling as a game to be won but not a road 
to intellectual fulfillment. So the problem is not just how much science a student learn, but how they connect science to their life and society. That is very much important and uh, crucial. And that only make sense. And that make sense that changes the life. So here we have some challenges faced. We are also faced with the rapid technological change. A lot of factual information is available on the internet. The artificial intelligence is making certain occupancy obsolete. It is therefore much more important to give our students the fundamentals that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. So these essential tools include language skills such as comprehension, expression, and communication, as well as, as quantitative skills such as analysis, seeing hidden patterns, identifying variables, and so on. So, dear colleagues, so what we are working on is while current science curricula often focus on factual knowledge content, it is more important to teach the process of science, how science could be realized, how science could be assumed, visualized, how science could be understood in a proper manner. So the training should include mastering methods such as building models, constructing experiments, taking data, revising models based on data and communication results. The students should acquire the ability to solve problems by studying examples of various work in the progress process. They should develop free, bold, independent, and creative thinking. So they should be able to make rational judgment and rise above the ignorance and prejudice that are prevalent in society. So our goal is to train a student as people of intellect, not for a vocation. Graduates should be versatile enough to take on any job. Most importantly, their education should lay the groundwork for a long life learning as a society's need are constantly changing in a dynamic world of 21st century especially due to the imposed by the modern technology, advanced technologies. So then what we do, the curriculum reform is being designed with the following objective. So usually in this context, to make the science education. Sir, sir G. May, may I interrupt for a moment? Uh, students, students, do you see the, on the right, uh, on the top right corner, you see people. And if you go down, you will see Professor Ramakrishna Thakur at two places. At one place, it's just Thakur sir. Right, it is only at one place. In that case, I would request you to uh, disconnect and rejoin again. You will, be, you will see uh, first presentation and just click on that. Sir, so, take a second. Yes, sir. Uh, Malachi, Anish, Mukesh, Kylie, join to the first link. You are on the second link. Okay. We have some sound problem with this. Shall we continue, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Students have joined back. Yeah. So, dear Please colleagues. Continue, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for this kind of, uh, say, disturbance. I think our aim is to somehow. <laughs> Uh, Miss Rita Lakra, do you see the uh, people on the right hand, on the right top corner? Yes. So, do you see uh, Professor Ramakrishna Thakur's name at two places? Yes. Yeah. No, one place only. Oh. Uh, you are in second link or first link? 
सर फर्स्ट लिंक सर नो प्रॉब्लम यू आर इन फर्स्ट लिंक यू ओनली सर सर यू जस्ट गो थ्रू डाउन साइड यू सी दिस्ट ऑफ दीपल्स एंड गो थ्रू लिटल डाउन यू सी द Two uh, by the professor Ram Krishan Thakur. One is in C. You bracket you see the presentation. You click on that, then you can able to see. You just uh, check the list of the participant. You are easily uh, visible to you on your screen. Just okay. go down, go down, mm -hmm. and you see mm -hmm. the two entry by the professor Ram Krishan Thakur. In uh, one there is showing presentation. You just click on that. No sir, only. And the, the second name cannot see. I yes. I think uh, we can do one thing, uh, Rita, Miss Rita Lakra. Yes. Uh, do one thing. Uh, you you must have received contact numbers on your email. Please try to contact them separately. Okay, and okay. let's resume the session. Yeah. Okay, sir. Sir. Shashi Kansal, okay. let's resume. Sir, the session. Let's let's continue, sir. Pretty, pretty. all those who have who have difficulties in uh, seeing the ppt please contact on the on the, the numbers which have been mailed have been mailed to you okay separately okay thank you sasan sir yeah okay so can you see the ppt doctor kamle yes good yes, yes, yes sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. okay great so you know so the Uh, in order to accelerate the scientific activity or uh, uh, rigorously um, the, provide the science education among the student what we have to do we have to design reconstruct the curriculum based on the societal or industrial need so that will help prepare a student as a holistic individual who can think analytically solve a diverse set of problem and communicate the results provide opportunity for a student to interact with our community of scholars and engage in a research and practical exercise and so on in principle it provides a broad academic background in all sciences so dear colleagues here i would like to explain a bit about difference between science engineering and technology you know these three words are quite say uh, Uh, correlated strongly correlated with each other so need just uh, because here i suppose you will have a lot of uh, student as well so just in short i will give you the overview like just in a science what we do in the science is the body of uh, knowledge uh, knowledge of a uh, physical and natural worlds it seeks to describe and understand the natural world and its physical properties so it uses varied approaches scientific methods such as controlled experiments or longitudinal observations studies to generate knowledge scientific knowledge can be used to make predictions while when you come to engineering engineering is the application of knowledge in order to knowledge from coming from science in order to design build and maintain technologies it seeks solution for societal problem needs and wants it uses varied approaches for example engineering design process or engineering analysis to produce and evaluate solutions and technologies engineering engineering aims to produce the best solution given resources and constraints the third term is the technology so the technology is the body of knowledge system which bol raha sir sir narish ek second sir sir आप अपनी पीपीटी को पिन कर दीजिए सो दैट आपकी पीपीटी पूरी स्क्रीन पे दिखाई दे मतलब बच्चों को फिर कोई इशू नहीं आना चाहिए मेरे ख्याल से ऐसा कुछ बच्चों को इशू आ रहा है या इज इट ओके यस सर फाइन सर गुड सो या सो द टेक्नोलॉजी इज द बॉडी ऑफ नॉलेज सिस्टम प्रोसेसेस एंड आर्टिफैक्ट्स दैट रिजल्ट्स फ्रॉम इंजीनियरिंग and it can be used to describe almost anything made by humans to solve a problem or meet a need it results from the process of engineering 
So the technologies are anything made by human to fill a need or a desire for a society or an industry or a research institutions. So the difference between the science and technology. So the term science and technology often comes hand in hand with the one another that people easily mistake them to refer to the same thing. However, the two are fundamentally different, as I have already explained you. So they simply complement each other and benefit society similarity. Similarly, what are the disconnections between the science and technology then? So the science is the pursuit of knowledge. It studies natural phenomena as well as the reasons behind them. Science follows a method of acquiring information about a certain subject. This includes processes such as observation and experimentation. Its main purpose is discovery. Science revolves around facts such as statistics and evidence. The proven laws and statement of science are hard to challenge because they are backed with the hard proof and are not based on a single opinion or guesses. So on the other hand, the technology is the practical application of scientific knowledge and it exists to invent a way to solve problem or improve efficiency and effectiveness. While science is absolute, technology is prone to change based on new discoveries, societal needs, and the demand for the innovation. So this is actually, that's how we distinguish science and technology. So here, some key institutional shift like a school all over are witnessing key shift today. There is a growing interest in reinventing school education through institutional change. And they are from delivering content to build capacity, shifting the focus from instruction to developing generic skills in a learner. The second is from a stance along institution to value adding network. Schools are increasingly realizing that they cannot function in isolation. Insert inserting themselves from a socio-cultural milieu, not working yes, from yes, communities or of practice is leading to value addition and enrichment of curriculum design and curriculum transactions and so on. Right. And so these are some other points as well. So now I come to some points which are really very much important and motivational, inspirational for, for all of us, not only for the student, but it is their contribution, their discoveries, invention that make human life very easy on this surface. And uh, also the nature very much uh, amicable, favorable for the life of a human and even uh, wild animals. So. Here I will go through just a sum, give you the impression of some scientists, some most prominent scientists in the different domains because we are dealing with the natural sciences, basic and applied sciences, so physics, chemistry, and mathematics, and so on. So, you know, dear colleagues, it is a very well-known proverb that to make an apple, if you have to make an apple pie from a scratch, you must first invent the inverse, you know. So first, I will come to share the Galilee in a modern age, Galileo Galilei, who was born in actually Pisa in Italy. And you know, he's uh, known as the father of the of his discoveries in astronomy and physics. And he has given so many other things that below I have mentioned in the points. And this is the uh, transparency showing how Galileo was explain, explaining his discovery to the Pope. Pope is the supreme of Christian mythology. Then we come to Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday, this is the timeline. So Michael Faraday was born in 1791, a British citizen. Michael Faraday was a son of blacksmith who had to leave school in the fourth grade. It started work, he started working as a book binder and taught himself to read and write. He developed a fascination with the science and particularly in electricity after he studied a lot of serious academic works during his days. So, you know, he's a, one of my favorite scientists because he is the only scientist in the history of modern age, or I think uh, from the human settlement, I suppose, 
who never went to the school. As you can see, up to third standard, he has studied and he belongs to a very poor family. So he had to work as a child labor in England. Yeah, excuse me, Dr. Kamle, is any problem? No, sir, there's no problem. Okay, so, and he has Michael Faraday developed the passion for a science. He was a truly a genius, genius mind. As you can see, no schooling, but he turned to be the one of the pioneer sci pioneering scientists in the field of electricity. And also he's uh, considered as the father of electrical engineering. And uh, from electrical engineering, electronics engineering came out. You know? So I remember, I do not have that slide shared, but I remember while I was a student in uh, Germany, so one of our professor, he showed one transparency of Michael, about the discovery of Michael Faraday. And uh, there was a communication between Michael Faraday and then minister, uh, minister of uh, British Parliament. So the minister was asking Michael Faraday that I have heard that uh, you have uh, say done a lot of work on electricity. So how government is going to benefit from your discovery? And Michael Faraday was quite <laughs> embarrassed. And he said, uh, he thought that I think it is difficult to convince politicians. So he just told him, don't worry, my discovery will, at a certain point of time, will benefit the government and government will get a huge amount of revenue from the people. So government will be richer with my discovery. So it is a somehow a joke, one way the great scientist, other way the politician who is not able to understand the uh, say significance of his discovery. Anyway, so Faraday is especially known for his discoveries of electromagnetic induction and rotation, field theory, diamagnetics, tesation, and the magneto-optical effect, and so many other things. So these all are somehow the discoveries of Michael Faraday. Then we come to the Thomas Alva Edison. It is a very well-known name across the world. Born in 1847 in the United States, and he had patented about 1,093 inventions in his lifetime. I think this is the highest. I don't know anyone else more than that. So most of the inventions that came from Edison are batteries, phonographs, cement, mining, telegraph, light, and power. We also, he also improved the telephone made by Graham Bell and invented the kinetoscope that was used for viewing moving films. He was seen working almost more than 20 hours a day. You know, so very hard working. So here one proverb I mentioned, he said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration is the one of the most famous quote by Thomas Alva Edison. And everyone who so ever was born in this planet, he has to go, it is the life cycle. So he passed away in the year 1931. But whatever he has given, his scientific contribution, contribution to the world that is enlightening our life. Then coming back to Marie Curie Esclodos, very popularly known as Madame Curie. Marie Curie was a wife of Pierre Curie. So Marie Curie holds a record for a first female to be awarded with the Nobel Prize. So inventor and a scientist Curie was born as the youngest of five children in the year 1867 in Warsaw, Poland. And then it was somehow the part of Russia. She came to France, studied there, and somehow, and uh, also married to Professor Pierre Curie, under whom she was working. And uh, in 1903, she shared Nobel Prize for Physics along with her husband, Pierre Curie, and uh, and uh, and uh, Henry Becquerel, yes, Henry Becquerel. And after the death of her husband in 1906, she devoted herself to science absolutely, leading to 1911 Nobel Prize for Chemistry, 
It was unshared Nobel Prize for isolating radium, and she got Nobel Prize once again. And you know, she has always remained a source of inspiration and motivation for it, not only for a female, but also for a man across the world, for her determination to walk. She invented the first mobile X-ray machine, which helped to check the injured soldiers in the battlefield during the First World War in 19, between 1914 up to 1990-19. Radium is another great invention I have already mentioned. So however, with her brilliance, hard work and patience in a careful experiment, she performed her own invention, killed her because of radiation poisoning in 1934. You might be knowing after two years in 1936, her elder daughter, she has two daughters, Irena received, Irena, the elder one, she received a Nobel Prize for a chemistry shared with her husband in 1936, coming to Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton. So, Dr. Sharma, am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. So, Isaac Newton. I think Newton is uh, one of the, say, uh, pillar of the strength of modern age science, you know, who have given a lot of theories, concepts, based on which our classical physics is the theory of light, theory of motion, theory of gravity, dynamics, alchemy, theology, master of the mint, Newtonian world system, Usually the classical physics, we either call it classical physics or a Newtonian physics. The physics that was developed by the Newton. We have a two kinds of physics. Newtonian physics based on the Newton's principle and then the quantum mechanics based on the, say, black body radiation, based on, say, uh, Max Planck, Albert Einstein, leading to Heisenberg and uh, Paul Dirac and so on. So Newton, Born in 1643 in Wolfsburg, England, Sir Isaac Newton. Newton received the knighthood title from the British Empire. Sir, so Sir Isaac Newton is best known for his law on gravitation. He was a poor student. It was believed at a school or at a running the family estate. However, he loved making mechanical toys and models of wine mills. So students, it is just for all your motivation that it is not required that if a student is a very intelligent from the beginning, he will do well and other people who are mediocre or poor, they can't do. So you can see in a history full of examples, a lot of people who are poor in, during the school, they turn to be one of the greatest genius of the time and give a lot of contribution, scientific contribution that change the life on the surface, change the face of the surface. Well, so Newton explained the theory of gravity and gravitation by inventing calculus as no other principle could explain it. It is still valid. New revolution in mathematics, calculus was derived from his binomial theorem to infinite series and so on. So all these things, Newton died at the age of 84 in 1727. I'm going to show you one very motivational slide, share uh, physics. You know, the physics, the big is a physics. No? And the second is a physics if Newton slept under a coconut tree. So when Newton was sitting beneath a uh, apple tree, the left hand side, the big physics we have. He developed the gravitation, beginning to think creatively. And then one after another, say, hypothesis, predictions, law and all verified and mostly were true. Based on that, we have a classical physics or a physics. And so some people make joke that if Newton would have slept under coconut tea, we would not have so much science so far as we have, as you can see in the left hand side. So the other highly inspiring thing is, you know, in a 1665, Isaac Newton had to walk from the home when the University of Cambridge, he was associated with the University of Cambridge. You know that England has a two universities, University of Cambridge, University of Oxford. Though there are many, but these two are uh, much more famous, established in 1000, 1090 or something like that. 
So the University of Cambridge produced most of the scientists like uh, Newton. And while the University of Oxford produced most of the humanitarians, societal intellectuals. That's how they distinguish both the universities. So Newton was associated with the University of Cambridge. So they temporarily closed due to the bubonic plague. It was the most productive period of his life. And he used that time to develop his theories on calculus, optics, and gravity. Lockdown due to the plague, the pandemic phase, like we all are suffering. So, you know, this time we have to use it as a boom. So we do not have a social gathering. We are isolated. So we should use this time very creatively to think, think about the prospect, think about the science, think about our career, think about our future, plan and implement it accordingly. So you can see <clears throat> how the legendary figure, how the Newton made it productive or most productive period of his life. That is somehow the very much inspirational. These are some uh, more work Newton did in this field. Now come to the Albert Einstein. I think no one in this planet is who doesn't know name of the Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, he was born on the 14th of March, 1879, and died on 18th of April, 1955. <clears throat> So he was born in a Germany, all about 50 meter, minute drive from Munich. So he's a con considered as one of the greatest revolutionary scientists the world has ever known. Yeah. And in a 2000, he was rated as one of the most genius person ever born in the surface. So the man of the century has some a spectacular work in physics, which even makes him the father of modern physics for his contribution in developing the general theory of relativity, the world's most famous equation, <clears throat> E is equal to MC square on which the bomb is based, comes from his theory. He is considered as one of the greatest scientists of 20th century. His special theory of relativity revolutionized physics which even challenged the scientists at some. So the Albert Einstein's genius mind for the scientific advancement caused immeasurable change to the world, together with his intellect. He also he was also a celebrity, and so on. So this rare genius was awarded Nobel Prize in 1921 for his work on theoretical physics and for his discoveries of the photoelectric effect, for his explanation, actually. Explanation on a photoelectric effect, because the photoelectric effect was initially discovered by Gustav Hals in 1887, and then a lot of other people came to explain how the charges are emitted from the surface when the light is signed on certain alkali metals. So <clears throat> it, was, it was believed that the first Sir J.J. Thompson came to explain the photoelectric effect, how it works. And he was not able to explain. But he said that the charge emission that the Gustav, Gustav Hals is telling, that is nothing else than the electron. And he explained the electron masses, weight, and so on, charge, and etc., for which he received the Nobel Prize, I suppose, in 1906 or 1907. <laughs> Sorry. Then his PhD scholar, Rutherford, who is regarded as the father of nuclear physics. So he came to explain the photoelectric effect. You know, and he could not, but he gave the theory of this nucleus, you know, the um, positive uh, mass of a nucleus. And he received the Nobel Prize for his explanation of uh, gold foil experiment. Then his student, Niels Bohr, he came to explain the photoelectric effect. He was also not able to explain that, but he corrected the theory of atomic theory of Rutherford, that the electrons are not moving in a spiral path and collapsing on the center, because if the electron will collapse, then there is a no stability of a matter. And so he <clears throat> developed modified actually the atomic model, what the uh, um, 
Rutherford has given and for which he received also Nobel Prize. So you can see the photoelectric effect that was discovered originally by the German physicist Gustav Hage in somewhere 1887. Several scientists came to explain that, why it happens, and they were not able to do that. But they gave some part of some unique physical phenomenon for which they received the Nobel Prize. And it was Albert Einstein who gave the explanation of photoelectric effect and for which he received the Nobel Prize in 1921. Albert Einstein, your greatest physicist, was died in 1955 at a Princeton. I think uh, he was um, about 76 years old or something like that. Then we come to the Nikola Tesla. He was born in 1856 and lived till 1943. He's also considered as one of the most brilliant minds in terms of science and technology. And he has given a lot of other, lot of discoveries, inventions, modifications, and so on. So, and this, all these are listed is uh, somehow the invention discoveries of Nikola Tesla. Now we come to the James Clark, James Maxwell, James Clark Maxwell. Maxwell is considered as a, one of the most influential scientists in the modern age. You know, the Maxwell's electromagnetic equation. So <clears throat> Maxwell is considered, his equations are considered as a Bible. Just like a Bible has a very sacred uh, place in religion. And so the, his contribution, Maxwell's contribution, has a very sacred place in the heart of science and technology. Now we come to the, the, some discoveries of chemistry. I think we are running short of time, so I will go a bit faster. I think, I hope you might be knowing a lot of aspect things. So, well, so discovery of Madame Curie, so it is a somehow a uh, 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 strongly correlated with the physics and chemistry. I, I have already explained in the physics. So she also received Nobel Prize in a chemistry. So she is equally regarded as in a chemistry as well. Because in a science, it is interdisciplinary. Everything is somehow interconnected with each other. So now we're coming to the surface chemistry. Irwin Langmuir. Langmuir was born in Brooklyn, New York, was an American physicist, the chemist and an engineer. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1932 for his work in a surface chemistry. His initial contribution to science came from his study of light bulb, a continuation of his PhD work, and so on. Langmuir invented the gas field in Candescent lamp and hydrogen welding techniques. The Langemeyer Laboratory for Atmospheric Research near Socorro, New Mexico, was named in his honor. He was an American Chemical Society Journal for a Surface Science called Langemeyer. It has a very high impact factor. I suppose it was more than three. Now we come to the Linus Pauling. Linus Pauling is also one of the most influential scientists, source of inspiration for millions of people across the world. It is one and only Linus Pauling who received two undivided Nobel Prize. There are, I think, four people who received twice Nobel Prize, like uh, Marie Curie, uh, Linus Carl Pauling, and uh, one BCS theory, John Bardeen, uh, for uh, physics twice and uh, one chemistry, I forget the name. I think uh, he got a Nobel Prize in 1988 and uh, even before one for a chemistry. So two people, four people received twice Nobel Prize. However, it is a one Linus Carl Pauling who received two times Nobel Prize, but both the time he did not share, it was undivided. Linus Pauling born in Portland, Oregon, United States, and received Nobel Prize in 1954 for his peace activism. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1962 as well for a peace, because it was Pauling who realized that the Cold War, war between the Russia, then former USSR and the USA, could be 
using the atomic bomb to devastate each other and that will devastate the rest of the world. So he has taken the call and somehow motivated and convinced the scientific community in societal intellectuals, Nobel laureates, that we have to establish peace. We should not use the nuclear weapons for the devastation. We should use the scientific inventions for the betterment of life, for the betterment of nature, and so on. Oh, I'm sorry. So Pauline Orr is, was one of the founders in the field of quantum chemistry and molecular biology. His contribution to the theory of chemical bond include the concept of orbital hybridization and first accurate scale of electromagnetivity of the elements and so on. So he was died in 1919-94. I remember one aspect, one book he has written about vitamin C. So he, was, he has advocated about in, uh, taking vitamin C that is uh, helpful for the human body that improves the immune system. You know, in this corona duration, I remember his uh, uh, book and his uh, advocacy of in taking the vitamin C much more helpful. So, well, so as, <coughs> We understand that he, was, he has invented the electron diffraction instrument as well. With it, he has studied the use of electrons in diffraction. He supported the intake of dietary supplements, mainly vitamin C. He turned down an offer to work the Manhattan Project, which led to the development of nuclear weapons and so on. Now, yeah, I have already discussed with the, um, about uh, this um, um, Michael Faraday. So you know already, and there are some scientists that are uh, interrelated. John Dalton, Dalton has uh, given, uh, discovered the atomic theory in the beginning. Discovery of LCD theory by George William Gray. So <clears throat> now the, Fritz Haver, Haver Bush process. Haver Bush process is an industrial process for the synthesis of ammonia and discovered the Fritz Haver and Carl Bush and so on. And these are some discoveries. Now we come to the mathematics, dear colleagues. Time is running out. So I think I have to move faster a little. Well, so <laughs> mathematics, actually important discoveries in mathematics. Mathematics is we consider is a one of the most outstanding discovery of the time. Mathematics is the language of God. Mathematics is the finest tool for the analysis of anything to everything. Without mathematics, we can't do anything. So that's why we keep mathematics on top. And then comes other things like the physics, the chemistry, biological sciences, and so many other things. So as you can see the Aryabhat, he, has, he was the first person to create a symbol for a zero, and it was through his efforts that mathematical operational like addition and subtraction started using the digit zero. Zero helped merchants to balance their books, an essential part of successful trade, and so on. Due to the zero, it was the mathematics was established from India. It went to the Middle East. From Middle East, it went to the Europe, and number system was developed. Now we have a man who knew infinity. Discovery of infinity by Srinivas Ramanujan. Ramanujan was also an Indian genius, though he passed away at the age of very early age, I think 33 years of age, but he's still known for his outstanding contribution in mathematics. Many of his theories were still un are still unsolved. Now, discovery of Pythagorean theorem by Pythagoras. 569 BC. So these are somehow established the pillar, pillar to the science. And that's why I'm giving just a little overview about these people. Invention of calculus, Isaac Newton, we have already discussed in detail. Carl Frederick Gauss. Gauss is actually a very renowned mathematician. I remember uh, he was a, he's a, say, 
again a german mathematician he has uh, he asserted that mathematics is the queen of the science and the theory of number in the queen of mathematics you know germany like a country they believe in science the science is on top and when i went to germany first time i saw a currency note and there was a no politician like in our currency note there is a gandhi there is a um, nehru indira gandhi and so many politicians are there uh, no scientist but in a german currency i found only the scientists were there like a uh, carl frederick gauss gauss was on a 10 euros note and so the max planck or uh, some other people so it is a somehow the motivation well so <clears throat> these are some role of the covid solving the mystery the mathematics as i told it is the model have been one of the driving force behind the policies such as pandemic planning resource allocation implementation of social and distancing measures and other inventions around the covid 19 pandemic and so on. now we come to the biological discoveries discovery of biological world it was actually antony von leeuwenhoek in a 1965 a dutch cloth merchant named antony discovered the micro bill world by peering through a homemade microscope and his discovery of a previously unseen universe not only turned people's world view inside out but also laid the foundation for understanding the microbes cause disease other is a carl linnaeus a botanist physician and geologist he came up with a system of naming ranking and classification of organism that we still use today in the field of biological science he was his vast collection of specimen of plants animals and cells that led him to think up a way of grouping the naming species and so on edward jenner is widely regarded as the foundation of immunology and so on. now the charles darwin it is also he is also one of most influential scientists in the human settlement and the history of human civilization so you know he established that all species of life have descended over time from common ancestor and the existence of new species occurs through the process of natural selection natural selection highlights the organism with the characters that are better suited to conditions in which the leaf are more likely to survive and produce passion on their trait to figure generally so <clears throat> now gregor mandel the another legendary scientist who changed this who gave a lot of scientific contribution that improved scientific temperament scientific context and risked it so the gregor mandel's extraordinary contribution did not receive it just recognition until long after his death he used green peas to discover and demonstrate the laws of genetic inheritance coming the term dominant and recessive gene in the process so theodor sogen matthias sliden and so on they have done foundation cell theory and so on. now louis pasteur louis pasteur is one of a very famous name in the history of biological science who influenced actually the complete science in the last 200 years i think uh, so often regarded as one of the father of germ theory of disease which stated that microorganism known as pathogen or germs cause disease by inventing humans other animals and other living host as well discovered the process of weakening the microorganism for immunization process and purpose to create vaccine against anthrax and rabies his work framed the basis of current knowledge on immunization and vaccination sir alexander fleming fleming discovered the antibacterial properties of penicillin in 1928 penicillin is a very widely used uh, medicine carl landestein he discovered the blood groups you know how important it is then discovery of insulin insulin by sir frederick bentin charles best then barben macleton discovery of jumping genius james watson <coughs> sorry and francis clark who have discovered the structure of dna discovery of cloning by sir ian bulmot keith and keith campbell 
Now, the final slide is on forensic sciences. Since we also run the forensic course, so here I have to give a, just a few brief introduction of some scientists, their contribution. Sir Arthur Cannon Doyle, he started as credited for the revolution of criminal profile. So most well known for his authorship of the made a significant contribution to the evaluation of criminal profiling. Alphonse Bartillon. So Bartillon system, Bartillon created the first system of physical measurement, photography and recording that policy could use to identify criminals called anthropometric or brilliant system and so on. While the Sir Albert Saran Armstrong, he discovered the question documents. Calvin Hooker Goddard, he has discovered the forensic ballistic. It is one of the most important part of his study in the forensic sciences. Alec J. J. is uh, the father of DNA fingerprinting. Well, dear colleagues, so now we come to the second part here. I need just a 10, 12 minutes to wind up. So here, so far, I have, give, I have given you the overview of science education, how science education transformed the life on this earth's surface. Whatever you see in this picture, the multi-story building, green glass campus, mountain, clean air, clean water, the nice road, a playground, everything from register, transmitter, um, capacitor, inductor, which is even not only in an automobile train, but also in a space shuttle and aeroplanes. So all that discoveries, all the contribution coming from the scientists changed the life on the Earth's surface. Why? Because they have studied the science. Science is somehow studying the natural process. So here at a GD Buenca University, as I mentioned, we are doing, we are uh, say engaged in scientific activities. So the usually the all the higher education has a only one mission, and that is imparting the quality education, quality education, research, innovation, entrepreneurship, and so. On. So <clears throat> here is a somehow some basic information about our uh, student faculty. The students are given a world class education here and uh, research and so on. So these are here the internationalization. We have a say a collaboration with the international organization, as you can see here in Netherlands, Australia, University of Essex, Nottingham, Kent, University of Kansas, Arizona City, and so Taiwan, Malaysia, and all. So here at the GD Wenka University, we have about 12 schools. All the schools are listed here. We are at the top, School of Basic and Applied Sciences. So we are engaged in a science uh, education. So we belong to the School of Basic and Applied Sciences. This is myself. I'm a dean. My um, colleague, Dr. Gupta, has already introduced me. This is the reason of school, as I have mentioned, that every institution across the world has a one one say, uh, a reason to impart the quality education. How that comes under the mission. So as you can see, we have listed in the mission. So all these things are available at our homepage. I invite you people to go through the homepage our homepage, it is a SOBAS. If you type School of Basic and Applied Sciences, GD Goenka University, you will get to know everything about what we are doing, who we are, who, uh, who are our faculties in a different fields, what we have done for the student, what we have done for the societal benefit, and so on, which kind of the state of art facility we do have, everything. So here, just I give you the overview. This is the state of art of laboratory facility. As you can see, it is, uh, say, uh, 
chemistry laboratory, physics laboratory, forensic laboratory, and so on. Now, this is the faculties. So as I said, we have, uh, say, our faculty members at the School of Basic and Applied Science are coming from a uh, highly reputed national or international institution like uh, IITs, mostly from the IITs, NITs, IASC Bangalore, Dr. Gupta, IASC Bangalore, and a lot of other, here you can see the photographs. It is not possible to include all. We are actually 35 faculty members and staff. So all are coming from the prominent national or international institution having the postdoctoral experience and all are serving as a also editorial board member and reviewer in a various research journals of international repute besides their usual teaching and so on. So <clears throat> this is the existing program at SOBAS. As you can see, we have a BSc physics, chemistry, mathematics, microbiology, forensic sciences, biotechnology, biology, BSc pass course in a different uh, combination like a physics, chemistry, math, geology, chemistry, or a botany, geology, chemistry, or a microbiology, geology, chemistry, and so on. BSc then pass course in geology, physics, math, PG diploma in cosmetic, criminology, data science, and so on. And so we have a master course listed in the right hand side in a chemistry, physics, mathematics, forensic sciences, microbiology, biotechnology, bio chemistry, data science, MSc geology, MSc wildlife, forestry, biophysics, environmental science, and so on. Besides PhD program, full-time and a regular part-time. Here you can see the duration, student in yearly fees and future prospect. Future pro prospect means where you can get the job. Because while doing the science, you will have a much more opportunity to get the job, not in the industrial sector or a research institute across the country, but also crossing the border in an international organization. Every developed country needs a skilled scientist, a skilled people. As in the beginning, I said that the science is a, somehow the foundation, foundation of the progress. So you can see you will have a huge possibility to get the job. So, and if you want to detail, it is also placed in our uh, university homepage, our school homepage. There you can get it. If not, you can also write to us, email, we will give you the detailed information about all that. So, <clears throat> here, it's unique at the GD Goenka University while we deal with that, uh, say, um, teaching and learning. So the experience, we have introduced experiential learning. You know, the science education is absolutely different than how you teach the history or in, the, in a classroom, you know? So for a science teaching science or a mathematics, we need a different kind of the tools and technique that we have to develop so that it will help a student to understand the natural phenomena. We are doing, we are just trying to understand the natural behavior, whatever is in the nature, that's all. So the students are regularly taken for an educational trip to industry and laboratories because we believe that while you can learn while doing is a more effective way. So the visits are strongly correlated to their program structure. I mean, if a student is, belongs to the forensic science, we send them to the forensic laboratory of Ames All India Medical Institute. If they belong to a chemistry, we so send the student to the uh, mankind or any pharmaceutical industry for a laboratory visit to understand how whatever they are studying the theory, how it is the people are doing chemistry or a forensic science in their laboratory. It helps understand the subject in a better way. So also we organize conference faculty development program, student development program, workshop, symposium, on a regular basis to enrich a student and a faculty members. We invite distinct, we organize distinguished expert and invited guest lecture by the prominent national and international speaker on a re very regular basis. Every month we conduct two, three invited or expert lectures from coming from the pro either prominent Indian institution, full professor, directors, dean, or international organization like NASA and so on. I will show you some pictures as well. We have also established a practice practice school. Practice school meant for 
providing opportunity research avenue, research possibility to a student, and it connects a student, our school, to the industry, to the research institution. So a student had to mandatory attend a long term and a short term training at industry or academic institution as part of their curriculum, in a bachelor degree or master degree. Here you can see last year we have invited a uh, distinguished scientist, Dr. Krishan Kumar, he was a senior scientist or uh, medal winner. So he is a scientist at NASA. So Dr. Krishan Kumar was here with us in uh, on the 19th and 20th of August last year during the orientation day. This year, again, I have uh, requested him for a webinar session on the progress of science. And he very graciously accepted the invitation. Hope in the next month or so on, we'll have opportunity to see him again. So this is a picture photograph during our during his visit. As you can see, left hand side, Professor Krishan Kumar, along with all our faculty members. However, in the right hand side, you can see Professor Krishan Kumar uh, along with all the students taking lecture, one to one interaction. So all that helps to understand science in a better way. Here you can see we have organized a distinguished lecture of a Professor P.V. Sarma. P.V. Sarma is also a very well-known uh, academician, visionary, and dynamic leader. He has established two technological universities in India. One is a DTU, Delhi Technical University. Earlier it was a DC, Delhi College of Engineering. He was a principal and he upgraded Delhi College of Engineering to the Delhi Technical uh, University. Also he has established, uh, say, uh, 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 university at uh, uh, Bhopal, um, Rajiv Gandhi Pradyogiki University. So we have invited him. And then we invited Dr. Uh, say D K Aswal. He is a still director at CSIR National Physical Laboratory. Right hand side, you can see. We all faculties are sitting together and behind students during his talk. Professor Ram Kumar from the Central University, he is a dean of a biological science. Share right hand side his lectures. Left hand side session on bioentrepreneurship, a career opportunity conducted, organized by our faculty members and all the biological science students. Here you can see again we have organized a uh, <coughs> workshop for forensic student. There we have invited the CFL CBI director, Dr. N.B. Bardhan, right hand side, and a left hand side, a senior scientist from forensic Times, All India Medical Institute. This is a national left hand side, national physical laboratory visit conducted by our faculty members, Dr. Talukedar, Dr. Roy Chaudhary, and so on, all other students. Right hand side again, I can see in the center, professor <coughs> from CSIR National Lab and our professor and a student. This is the IIT visit of a chemistry student, biochemistry student, AIMS visit of central workshop and uh, the educational university and, uh, and so on. So here we have also organized an online conference. Time to time here you can see of eminent personalities like a water man of India, you can see here the uh, white dress. Here's a uh, um, Dr. Rajinder Singh who received the Raman Maxis Award in a 19, uh, 2001. Also, we had uh, our chief guest, Dr. Uh, P.B. Sharma, uh, along with the former chief of army staff. General V.K. Singh, I think you can see, you can't see here V.K. Singh, he was a chief guest for a day and so on. This is we have organized one international conference under collaboration of, uh, say, um, Arizona State University. So in the left hand side, you can see the professor Dirk and other professor from Arizona State University. And a, a left hand side and a right hand side, we all share some pictures of the World Environmental Summit, we have 
actively participated on 18th and 19th January. This is again other uh, conference on sustainable conference at Vigyan Bhavan, where I was awarded the um, by the Green Tech Asia Award for my contribution in the field of nanotechnology by uh, the um, Minister of State, Home Affairs, Government of India, Mr. G. Krishna Reddy. You can see him in the figure. Well, besides teaching and learning, we also provide the outreach program, like a school connect program, teaching program for our children in a rural area, blood donation camp, organizing lecture, workshop, experimental demonstration at school. We also invite a skilled student to visit our laboratory. We motivate them for a science education, as I said in the beginning, that the aim of this session is to motivate talented students to remain in a science stream so as to strengthen and expand India's research and development based in science and technology for the greatest benefit of this great nation and also the international scientific community and Mother Earth. Here you can see one of our faculty, Dr. Arora, Himansu Arora, went to GD Gwenka University at Siligori to address the students. So we are also going across the country to motivate school student for the higher education in the domain of science. Here you can see Dr. Sunita Negi and engineering faculty. They both went to Noida, <clears throat> Greater Noida, to motivate a student and so on. So these are some pictures of outreach program. You can see here our mathematics faculty in charge, Dr. Naresh Sharma, along with the faculty in charge of biological science in a green dress, olive dress, Dr. Priyanka Sharma. <coughs> and so on. And here you can see Dr. Priyanka Sharma. Uh, sorry, the earlier was a Priyanka Tyagi, Dr. Priyanka Tyagi in the olive dress. And here in the left hand side top, Dr. Priyanka Sharma, the faculty in charge of her chemistry along with the Prerna Sharma and some other faculty members and a student in the laboratory. Here in the below, you can see me addressing the student. They were invited a student coming from the other school and Batsapur and Burgaon. We have invited them to visit our school. So in the left hand side, right hand side, bottom, also you can see the photograph along with their principal and students. So all the students were, and then also we have in, uh, in the uh, organized science camp for say, uh, to interact young and ignited mind and all the students were somehow directly exposed to the eminent scientist professors who have given uh, plenty of contribution in the field of science. So this left hand side picture is with the, all the uh, science students. I hope some of you must be adopting um, uh, joining this session. So we have also training and placement. So training and placement, they work along with the industry and institution to explore the possibility for the graduate and postgraduate student for a training and placement and provide 100% assistance to the student to fulfill their dreams besides the faculty of SOAS. So the student, our student undergo for a six month major research training at a leading institution like NMAS, DRDO, AIMS, TIFR, CSIR, ISRO, IASC, BARC, Delhi University, JNU, Mankind, Sun Pharma, European and US based institution and organization for training and research. And here, some of our students, they were placed in this company like Baizu's, CVENT, CHEG, InnoData, NEET, SAP, and so on. It is not possible to list all, but just we gave you some impression. So these are the list of student, different batches who have shared some student testimonial, what they think about the university. Actually, also on the, our homepage, we have taken from their own. It is the testimonial of our student, how they think, what we are doing, and how it is helpful for them. So that's all from my side. So, yeah, so thank you so much for attending this session. And uh, now I would like to uh, 
um, request Dr. Sasikant Gupta to continue the session. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for a very informative webinar. I hope I'm I, I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah. So it was a very interesting and motivating seminar, and uh, there are a lot of comments from the uh, participants. Most of them are saying that it was very informative, very interesting. Uh, so thank you very much, sir. Uh, if any of the students have any questions. Please feel free to type in the chat box. Sir had already announced in the um, session. Sir had written in the chat chat box. So if you have any doubt, you may please ask uh, in the chat box. Uh, I have a small announcement. Uh, the certificates uh, to the participants will be available only after the completion of the series of webinars, and it is going to complete on first of August. And uh, you are supposed to fill the feedback form, all of you, to get the uh, certificate. So, once again, thank you very much, sir. And uh, there are a lot of comments from the participants, although there are not many questions, but uh, comments mentioning that it was wonderful, very nice, and very informative uh, session. Uh, may, may I, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Shashikar, sir. Yes, so, sir, dear please. students, uh, I would like to share the the poster for the next session that we are going to uh, do on uh, Wednesday, July 50, 15th. And this is the session, and uh, we'll be talking about the fascinating career in biological sciences. The speakers are Dr. Shashank Kamle and Dr. Ranak Dhankar. Both are working at the SOBAS as assistant professor of biological sciences. The moderator will be Professor Ramkosh Thakur, the Dean of Subhas. Please join uh, using the Google Meeting ID link. And before that, you should first regist get registered by using the Google form link, which has which is mailed in the poster, overall poster. Okay, thank you. Well, so, thank so, you, Dr. Yeah, please, sir. So at the end, I would like to add a few more points. So. Uh, I think uh, we are going to close this session, right? Yes, yes sir. Okay, so just few lines, like uh, as we know that the education is not something we can stop at any point of time or we can finish. It is a continuous journey, you know. So, dear colleagues, this is the time, time to need to inspire our generation that will absolutely shape the future of this great nation, bright future for the mankind. We all are able to wipe out the poverty, injustice, discrimination, unemployment, pollution. You know, the hundreds of millions of dollars are spent every year to control the human mind. But at the same time, hundreds of billions of dollars, our government and the universities like uh, GD Goenka University or other universities are also spending to nurture young and ignited mind that could be beneficial for the society you know so as uh, say very well known philosopher william william james told once that the greatest discovery of our generation is that human being that can alter their lives by altering their attitude of mind with these words i hope you have enjoyed this talk, this session. If you have any question, you can send us the queries. We are always here to help you, to navigate you properly by all means. All our faculties are highly dedicated for the quality education, research, innovation, entrepreneurship, and guiding you through any kind of the questions if you have any question, you can just send us. Thank you so much. I wish you a nice and wonderful day. Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta Ji, Dr. Sashikant Gupta, Dr. Kamle, Dr. Sonika Sethi, Dr. Naresh Sharma, Dr. Dhankar, Dr. Renu Chaudhary, and all the members who have made this session possible. So I can I thank and congratulate all of you. Also, I congratulate all our participants, students, parents, and 
faculty members who have joined this session. So thank you so much indeed. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Please fill the feedback form, which is shared in the chat box before leaving the session. Thank you, sir, for such an informative session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Sashank sir, Sashank sir. Yes 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 sir. Malathi ji, Kuldeep ji, 
ज्योति जी यू मे लीव द सेशन प्लीज अखिलेश जी मलाथी मिस मालती सेशन इज ओवर यू मे लीव If you have anything uh, to ask, you can ask, please. Malathi, you may unmute yourself. Then you can ask. I know uh, uh, majority of time you are in a session two. Malathi. uh miss malati do you have any question i think i think 